welcome you to the last session of uh, unit 5 mbr software testing and uh, this is the last uh, theoretical session uh, of the entire mbr software testing and uh, in this unit uh, we will uh, try to study the test management aspects in terms of uh, defect management test management and control and test management tool defect management tool then after this uh, we will go through all the units what we have studied quickly so that uh, we are done with all the critical parts of uh, mbr software testing so before this i will just go through what we have understood in the previous session about uh, test management so we had gone through change management document the change request analyze the impact approval is required uh, from uh, uh ccb ccb something like change control board who will approve for the changes after the analysis is done and the final approval will be the senior management and any minor changes will be taken care of uh, within the team without highlighting to the higher management so making of changes will be done through uh, check out check in process which is nothing but uh, the configuration uh, control process where we check out we will take out uh, from the repository and once we update all the reviews are done we are going to check in back so that a new version is created and the changes are available in the repository so that is how we do the changes on to the corresponding document code or test aspects test cases anything that are part of the test cases uh, sorry that are part of the configuration items cis then we are going to close that change particular change saying that it is baseline or it is available for the release or delivery so that is what is the change closure then we had gone through incident management so we understood what is an incident any significant unplanned event that occurs during the testing or any other event that requires uh, some investigation and resolution of that particular incident so the incident could be due to a fault intermittently it has happened Uh, unexpected, so the results are incorrect. Test was the test was not performed correctly. So we can raise the issue incident against the unexpected behavior, or it could be self whatever that particular tester or engineer trying to test it as well, because the testing may be an incorrect way of doing also. That is also can be called as an incident. So that there is a need for correction. of the incident or the resolution for that particular incident so in incident management we first identify or detect and record what is that incident about and uh, details of all that incident then we do an analysis and classification priority like whether this five incidents have happened how we can prioritize what is impacting that so that is a show stopper for the rest of the program to continue or it could be testing execution whatever it is the next one is is to investigation and detailed analysis we will try to investigate what is the cause where the problem was before that incident cause incident had happened and we try to put a mechanism for recovery how we can recover that particular incident whether we can fix that code fix that design or requirements or the test approach itself is wrong all this will be part of the resolution and recovery then uh, we will have a different stages of incident like new open wait rejected include into the build verified closed etc and every revision that we are going to release or deliver as an artifact should identify a clear history of what is going on in the particular ci or configuration item so every configuration item is supposed to have something like this mandatorily which will identify the particular revision number why it is what revision number it is been numbered and on which date it is been revised who is the author who is the reviewer or approval and what are the changes that particular revision number has undergone similarly upon the next change we are going to highlight it as revision number 2 3 4 like this each one will identify clearly so what is the revised details or updated details or the change details that are undertaken within the particular revision that's what we do 
that is about the revision history how we are going to mention for each of the CI. Then after understanding the configuration management, incident management and all that we went through the need of CM tools. So all the test wear has to be having identified in a physical location or a particular repository. So to control and manage that we need CM tool or a configuration management tool such as MKS, VVCS dimensions, SVN etc. So this is basically used for the CI, it could be a development, it could be a testing, it could be a test case design, any documents, any excel sheet, anything that is part of the project, all this will be controlled and managed through the configuration management tool. A glimpse of how the configuration management looks, we try to understood and it has various windows which will highlight in different colors in terms of what is the status, when it was updated within that particular project and whether it is inline, whether it is a baseline and if it is baseline how many elements of that particular baseline is ready for this etc. All this will be part of the tool as a display you can see it, you can configure the tool also it does not matter usually the tools will allow user to configure the way that project has to be fashioned. Then we understood about the test management in terms of planning of the test project, various aspects of test management and its effort in terms of test management, methodical support, technical support, domain expert, test configuration management and the tester all these efforts for each of the activity under test management will be updated with a start and end date this is something like a planning document or a management document against this tracking will be done how much effort has gone here and all that and in one of our sessions we studied about the variance like this is a plan this is the management plan and against which how much we have consumed how much is left over what is our trend and what is the variance from a schedule, what is the variance from a fault, all this will be part of the test management we are going to take care. And also we studied about how the test processes are related to the software view model, we understood about multiple pre development life cycle, you can see model prototype and final product and each has its own V model and that is why it is called as multiple V developments or a life cycle model and that life cycle model has on the right hand side edge as a test aspects or test activity and that is on par with the left hand edge of the particular model or prototype of the final product development. So that is how it is aligned with the V model. <coughs> In detail the same thing is been explained with this diagram is from that book called testing embedded software by Bart Brockman and Edwin Nottenboom, more details are provided and we have gone through this in our one of earlier sessions, I think it is in unit 3 ago. So similarly the different V models, various V models we have gone through, on the right hand side you can see how the testing is aligned in terms of regression testing, random testing, statistical testing certification all that, the ultimate aim is to reach the, the rightmost edge of the upper side of the V model basically to release that particular activity which is identified for that particular V model and we are going to define a release criteria. The next type of testing for as for a of the interest in the software testing is testing design by contract, here the approach uses the documentation only to capture the design but it will encourage basically sort of an interaction among different developers, so that particular developers are allocated work like a contract and they will provide the support in terms of interacting with each other and providing the solution, so that is how we do the test, the specification is called as interact sorry contract and that contract will be developed after the interaction is done with the different module owners and the system owner. 
then uh, we had gone through a process called agile development process uh, they basically use in uh, uh, short duration time to market uh, for the application embedded application or embedded testing embedded systems which is uh, totally away from uh, normal and software development uh, process so the current process uh, are too heavy weight or too cumbersome in terms of documentation process and all that so all that will be bypassed in the agile development process and the current software development is too rigid is uh, difficult uh, in terms of uh, changing requirements incompletion and short development cycles all is uh, are very difficult to align with the current model so the process itself is deviated in terms of doing the agile where it is totally aligned with the business process or a value to the business basically it brings up and different methods of agile are available like such as extreme programming scrum like this so most popular ones are scrum and xp extreme programming so basically the values are something like individuals and interactions over process and tools working software over comprehensive documentation customer collaboration uh, we take care uh, more in the agile process than the contract negotiation and all that uh, for change as and all that responding to change over uh, following a plan so as soon as the change comes we are going to start working on that implementing and all that instead of going to the plan process analysis and all that because There's no time for all this, so it's a quick uh, uh, process mechanism. Extreme programming, adaptive software development, dynamic uh, system development method, all are different types of methods that we have. You can see more uh, details and uh, say non-profit organization uh, they depend and they promote uh, agile development basically. Uh, companies like NXP or any company like Tonics uh, uh, Group they follow this uh, to. develop the prototypes and all that uh, they adopt to this agile uh, scrum uh, development process of course testing is also part of that uh, scrum development so they will uh, identify their own mechanism to align with the agile development so you can see that example uh, what i have put they call it as a string uh, backlog so every day based on the frequency that backlogs will be cleared and identified action is taken here so for example if it's a 30 day project within 24 hours uh, uh, there is a action for each of the um, development team or the stakeholders they will try to act on that so that they reach the deadline as i said the agile testing scrum process also will be used there is no specific or dedicated uh, tester in a formal scrum process testing is carried out by the developers with unit testing mechanism testing coverage is carried out by the product owner or the client he takes care of how much covered and all that by seeing the report against the specification so the testing is taken care by each sprint sprint is something something like a sprint backlog on a daily basis or whatever it is as per the definition and there is the acceptance criteria for each of that and that will be taken care of. next type of thing is a test driven development so basically we write the test for a specification and against that we will try to develop the project so basically the project is oriented towards a test or test driven surrounding the test cases and all that we are going to develop it so we write a test case that fails write just enough code for that to fix that fail uh, mechanism and we repeat so the complete uh, testing is taken care and uh, the development is done okay test management and control uh, what to do when things happen that affect the test plan so if there is a hit on the test plan we are going to definitely work on the test management uh, and we need to control it so we need to reallocate various resources uh, we need to change the schedule we need to change this environment we need to redefine the entry exit criteria and uh, number of iterations uh, changes 
we need to take care and any test suit related uh, changes are there that also uh, we need to see the effect and release date also we need to postpone or uh, update it that is what uh, we had studied in the earlier session, uh, session 3. Today we will try to quickly understand the test management in terms of uh, uh, test management tool. So we know that the reallocation of resources changes to the entire uh, test life cycle artifacts need to be managed and controlled. So that is what we do with the test management tool. So the tool will basically take care of uh, all the artifacts and it will highlight and it will provide the tracking mechanism in terms of where we are in the testing project. So that report will be used by the test manager and I will try to uh, adopt uh, as per the uh, strategy that uh, is going to work out for the uh, release. So basically the test management tools provided by tool vendors offer only the functionality to store test cases, scripts and scenarios and sometimes integrate defect management something like uh, uh, Bugzilla uh, test management uh, example I will try to tell you uh, what we had used in one of the project. So the test management uh, identifies uh, test cases, scripts. Scenarios, all this will be like uh, will be taken care of with the test management tool, such as uh, test link. I think one of the sessions, uh, practical sessions, uh, we'll go through this how this tool works, and uh, we'll try to create a exercise uh, sample uh, project, uh, identifying the test management uh, test cases and scenarios. Similarly, we need to uh, identify the defects using defect management uh, tool. All this will be basically used for managing the test. Something like Bugzilla tool is used for test management and defect management. So basically, it offers to store all these artifacts, scripts, scenarios, bugs, and all that. And they don't store plans. So plans, test management manager has to see. And uh, this tool will provide the numbers and uh, all that uh, artifacts, and he need to align that against the project schedule. So they have no facilities to store test plans and project schedules, but this type of test management tool is not uh, basically useful uh, and uh, controlling the activities. But uh, they need to be aligned manually to the uh, test manager. That's what uh, they do. Uh, but uh, the good thing is uh, the tools uh, will have the ability to link system requirements to test cases uh, such as test link we can link so how many test cases have failed passed etc will be taken care. So these tools offer the ability to keep track of the coverage of test cases is very important thing how many test cases have been done how many test cases are failing passes all that uh, coverage reports uh, again as the system requirements or the specification requirements these tools will provide. In addition they become very useful if system requirements have changed or if it changes the test manager is able to show the impact of these changes and how many test cases we have to execute or re-execute if one requirement changes so that test uh, so that so those things can be highlighted with the tool basically and report it accordingly and uh, the show stoppers in terms of any serious issues or any bugs that have been uh, uncovered all this will be highlighted with the test management tool. The other part as I said is a defect management tool such as Bugzilla can be used defects detected during the test process must be collated in an orderly way basically. 
because uh, all the defects need to be used and controlled that is where uh, this tool is useful for a small project uh, a simple file system with a few control procedures is sufficient uh, one excel sheet sort of a, a document is enough where we will highlight uh, manually but as we as we progress uh, throughout the entire project we it may not be sufficient to uh, maintain through uh, simple uh, file system mechanism we have to live with the complexity and uh, for that is advised to use uh, defect management tool tools such as uh, bugzilla usually in the industry they have their own uh, tools defined actually uh, bugzilla is a royalty free it is not a royalty free thing so if commercially we want to use it uh, you need to pay them or you need to uh, go for the royalty licenses and all that copyrights and all that but uh, in general what happens is embedded software industry they use their own in house tools to maintain the uh, defects and the test artifacts and against that the management will try to correct it and report to the customer and all that. so more complex projects need at least a database with the possibility of generating progress reports showing for instance the status of all the defects or the ratio of solved to raised defects several tool vendors have developed the defect management systems all these are designed around a database system and have tracing and reporting system. so definitely all the repository with regard to defects will be stored in the uh, uh, database systems and the database systems will be smartly used by the uis and they they are used to report and uh, can be used to track it the tools have the ability to implement a workflow with the security and access level so admin can define who can uh, check in the files who can uh, uh, put into the uh, repository who can uh, uh, update it so that workflow or the work instructions can be defined so that the individual uh, uh, having different levels of access like developers can uh, have access for development level and testers can have a development uh, cannot have a development access but they can read they cannot write and all this sort of a uh, control mechanisms will be defined by the admin uh, for using the defect uh, management tool and also uh, as long as uh, that defects are uh, opened closed in progress hold and uh, we can set up a notification in terms of uh, email facility and some of them are available. so you can trigger that in the web itself so that once the uh, stages have been moved automatically the communication will be happening to the respective stakeholders the defect management system is used to store defects trace them and generate progress and status reports the tracing and reporting facilities are almost indispensable as control instruments so very important aspect of the defect management so with that we come to the conclusion of test management tool and defect management tool in this session so with this we are going to end the embedded software testing of the last session so now we will try to Okay, so this uh, next few minutes uh, I am going to uh, discuss uh, and highlight about what we have studied overall in the embedded software testing right from unit 1 to unit 5. Okay, so the units are uh, divided uh, such a way that uh, all the aspects of embedded software testing is taken care and uh, and in unit 1 we studied regarding uh, which one fundamentals of est embedded software testing right that is the first session we had and in the second session we understood about the testing methods third one is on static analysis 
and code reviews. So the fourth one is basically the software integration. Fifth one is nothing uh, more test management because each these five sessions are very five units are very important a part of the MS software testing. So that is how it is been. The course has been divided that way. We will try to go through uh, as a pointers what are the things that we have uh, uh, highlighted in each of this. So we started with the fundamentals, then different testing methods, dynamic white box, black box, and all that. Next one is on the offline part of that, like static analysis, code reviews, reviews, type of reviews, and all that. Then we understood about the hardware, software, software, software integration methods and regression, and all that. The last one is on about the test management in terms of test planning, test life cycle alignment with the development life cycle and the tools that are used for managing the tests as well as the defects. So that is how the entire course <coughs> is being parted and we have gone through them. Okay. So in unit 1 it was about the fundamentals of testing, it was an introductory session to embedded software testing and we had gone through embedded system basics. Embedded system environment, uh, embedded C glance because embedded C code is a specific code, and that is a separate course, of course, by itself. And uh, we try to understand uh, the basics of that and uh, compilation, linking, and all that uh, basic parts of that uh, embedded C language uh, and the embedded systems uh, we understood in that class. Uh, why I took embedded C is because most of the 90 percent of the projects that are there in the world for embedded systems are on the are developed basically using the C language. So that is why it is very important to understand embedded systems basics with the C embedded C language and fundamentals about that. Then we have studied about V and V. Validation and verification, cost of embedded software defects. We had seen a graph plotting various stages of embedded systems. We find defects; it will be difficult to control as we progress towards the end of the project. So it has to be fixed in the earlier stages. So that is why we need to have a right sort of a testing mechanism. So that's what we understood about the. Complexity. Then test process basics. So what are different processes that are followed, like test cases, procedures, then the scripts, then the execution on the environment. All these are the all these are basics. And embed software that system testing basics setup. How are you going to have a setup? So we had gone through the setup. How the system is communicated with the target board as a white box. How it is communicated with the Target board as a black box, and how the reports are being used, how the scripts are driven. All these basics we understood with a good example of a diagram, and we also understood about the development, environment, test environment as well. So continuation of the embedded software testing fundamentals, test methods we had gone through like acceptance, system integration, and component level testing, the various levels of testing. Then principles of test case design and procedures, how it looks like with an example we had gone through and how we can do the testing and debugging on the target and on the system we had gone through. Test planning like what is the goal, purpose, what are the contents of the tests, <coughs> planning in the planning process we had gone through. Then. We studied about example test plan documentation and test specifications. Also, we try to lay out example test procedure. Also, we have gone through testing standards in terms of guidelines and rules and all that. 
how the testing uh, document should be developed and testing should be carried out we understood and also we had a few questions and answers exercises we have made in the first unit and uh, we had uh, drawn a block depicting various levels of testing and uh, those levels are unit integration system and acceptance testing basic definition of test harness test bed test setup host and target based systems during development stage how it looks like during testing stage how it looks like then uh, target based uh, debugging and testing we have uh, three various uh, types of them simulation emulation and target monitoring each of them we try to understand uh, and uh, advantages and disadvantages of them and collaboratively we are going to use it for the embedded software testing and uh, tools what are the tools entirely in the embedded software testing that are used how they are categorized and uh, we try to uh, put a list and a snapshot of uh, the embedded software testing tools <coughs> and it will be listed as part of the planning test planning and set up software environment configuration and tool snapshot we had gone through definitions of entry and exit criteria for embedded software testing the various phases that it goes then uh, pm method we understood with lito principles software life cycle entry exit criteria prototyping uh, life cycle and example we have gone through a formal uh, life cycle and example we understood we model uh, life cycle mechanism for embedded software development testing we have gone through and uh, different life cycle processes uh, with an example of uh, entry exit criteria we have uh, studied life cycle process example uh, we took a consumer electronics example where different stages of uh, life process how it uh, passes through each other and uh, automotive embedded projects uh, testing phases and process also we studied to understand then uh, multiple wheel model life cycle uh, based on that uh, famous embedded software testing book we referred and uh, understood uh, in the same way we also uh, went through the v model uh, multiple v model test activities nested multiple v model testing by an independent team master test planning principles of embedded software testing uh, about i think uh, 10 principles we have studied about ml software testing which is highlighted in one of the uh, ml book that uh, after that we came to conclusion about the ml software testing ml software system uh, basics setup planning and all that next we started uh, study on the study on the unit 2 uh, in detail of ml software testing the first one being the testing methods and uh, testing methods have the various chapters various sessions about dynamic testing static versus dynamic testing context dynamic testing types black box white box techniques testing techniques strategy in general and in specific depending on the complexity and the nature of the embedded software testing under the test test case selection methods black box and white box testing coverage aspects advantages and disadvantages black box testing uh, uh, how to carry black box testing how to draw various test cases and selection and uh, in that uh, we studied uh, the, the fundamentals and the basics about uh, black box testing in terms of equivalence partitioning boundary value analysis state transition uh, state uh, or event transition testing so this primary methods of black box testing we had gone through black box testing examples valid and invalid claims classes boundary value analysis its applicability examples and i think we took the temperature so the sensor example with the high and low values so what are the values we can feed how we can use techniques in terms of black box testing using boundary value analysis equivalence classes coverage aspects also state transition testing uh, i think we had gone through the ncr example or something like that and uh, the various events actions activities states and transitions how it is going to occur and uh, how we can test it we had gone through 
we had an exercise example with a ui embedded instrument instrument by operation uh, operation methods or modes uh, with in that example uh, we went through we try to understand and put the various uh, testing strategy test uh, or state transition testing techniques state event table we had gone through with an example transition uh, tree legal illegal and uh, got test cases for the uh, state events we see an example of state events and transition testing uh, transition tree uh, drawn and uh, gone through the next type of uh, testing method is uh, model based uh, testing we understood the basics of model based design model based testing taxonomy of model based testing uh, we use uh, the various instrument uh, for that models uh, such as uh, matlab and all that and accordingly we are going to draw test strategy for that particular model and we are going to take care of the testing aspects of the model based design then uh, dynamic testing black box and white box testing approach coverage testing in terms of uh, structural coverage and the statement coverage decision or branch coverage condition coverage uh, other types of testing like data flow testing branch condition combination testing modified condition testing which is also called as mcdc lcsaj its principles then uh, unit testing and software instrumentation what it means and how they are used with the various tools then uh, test driver and test steps uh, definitions we had mcdc from d1 and b perspective or importance we had uh, gone through few slides then coverage testing tools vector cast ldra rtrt logic context we understood what they do and, and uh, i think one of the practical session we try to see possible in from like that one of the tool we can use it with an example project performance analyzers testing timing analysis profilers to the debuggers and all that we can uh, uh, develop the test strategy and uh, do the testing uh, of the embedded software testing testing uh, tools and life cycle test automation techniques test suits risk based testing we understood and uh, we had defined about uh, defined about uh, dry run and formal runs definitions the next one is uh, the third unit which is about the static analysis and code reviews we will do where we do static testing and analysis reviews inspection and all that and we had drawn uh, differences between uh, static testing and dynamic testing both are complementing each other both are needed static analysis has control coupling data coupling static matrix analysis akb complexity cyclometric complexity is called as and few examples so we had gone through with a call tree example uh, generated from the tool and uh, lines of code of the execution fan in fan out nesting levels in terms of generating the matrix static analysis tools like understand for cc++ polyspace coverity qac cantata ldra test bed etc they are used mr rule checker pc lint logic uh, logic scope rule checker are used for uh, uh, seeing the report of uh, the particular embedded software testing uh, uh, aspects in terms of code how they are used call tree analysis worst case execution tree analysis stack analysis stack workflow and coding standards and rules which are applied in the embedded software development will be checked in the tools and the reported and test matrix quantification test matrix life cycle matrix types software testing matrix in terms of various matrix that are being generated for embedded software testing and uh, defect acceptance defect rejection execution productivity test efficiency defect severity index automation coverage effort variance schedule variance scope change all these definitions we had matrix representation how they are being reported on a daily basis weekly basis and uh, trend charts how they are shown into the higher management of the customers it's a burn down chart suppose the 
uh, next set of activities is going to take one month and how are you going to reach that one month using the burn down chart we are going to predict and report and as we progress we are going to update it and report it and the matrix capture tool there are various tools that are used for managing the uh, test aspects defects aspects and all that defect management such as Bugzilla has been used. The next uh, unit is about software integration, integration testing which is also an important part of the software testing. We had defined about uh, integration testing, what is integration, definitions of system integration, system hardware integration, system software integration where we use software module, in system hardware integration we use hardware and software together we are going to build and integrate and test it and types of embedded software integration testing big bang bottom up top down and considerations for integration testing and its important importance we studied integration test strategy comparison comparison of various strategies like top top down bottom up big bang and all that we had gone through we had a comparison about it then uh, hybrid integration test strategy which combines uh, both the top down as well as the bottom up integration test approach then we have a centralized integration uh, layer integration client server integration collaboration integration etc based on the type of or the nature of the project we are going to decide and do the software integration testing then integration testing environment how it looks like system integration test integration from use case perspective specifically used in UML type of projects and we use that use cases to convert the test cases. Then we had gone through a regression testing which is nothing but retesting and regression testing definition of regression testing test strategy test areas test automation in terms of batch execution and processing change analysis and relative importance use case example we had seen prioritizing your regression test cases and what is the basis for doing that priority and all that we had gone through. Test case maintenance because it is very important because once the embedded software testing basic testing is done it is bound to up, update or modify over a period and how are you going to maintain it the project what are these steps that are involved for maintaining it what are the test cases we are going to exercise for the future versions of the different embedded software releases and the build process we had gone through and the last unit is about test management which had which we have concluded in today's session it talks about configuration management test management configuration management elements cm process SCM it is software configuration management, software configuration management activities such as planning, software configuration index control, status accounting, software configuration audit which are different activities that are used for SCM, SCM, SCM process example and tasks, configuration control and SCB software configuration board, controller board. Configuration items, uh, guidelines, and life cycle. Also, we have gone through and uh, SEM phases like initiation, planning, execution, and closure. Also, we had gone through in one of the session. And the uh, important thing is about uh, the version control or the revision control. And how are you going to do a baseline of the artifacts? Workspace, workspace management in terms of uh, the repository, how that is being used by development team, testing team, or the configuration. Uh, control people admin basically manages that and change management and instant management aspect also we had gone through. Last part was about CM tools USCS, SV and MKS and test management aspects we had studied in terms of testing process which is in relation with software V model designed by contract part of the testing. Agile development process, agile development as scrum process, agile testing scrum process, test driven development, test management and control, test management tool, defect management tool, 
so these are uh, part of the test management so that is about uh, test management in unit 5 so there are 5 units of ml software testing which we had gone through so with that we come to the conclusion of all the units of the ml software testing so in the next uh, 4 or 5 sessions we will try to cover up the practical aspects of embedded software testing we will divide accordingly the various elements that are used for embedded software testing in terms of practicality okay